Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm delighted to be here. I didn't know that I was going to be here until my wife uh, told me as I was on my way from Salt Lake City uh, home that I should redirect myself and because I was going to be in Washington, D.C. with her. And I said, what am I going to be doing? She said, I have no idea. Trust me, it's important. <clears throat> so I'm here. Um, in fact, by another no, blessed event, and that was a conversation I had with Vern Harnish, and Vern was invited to come speak here, but he couldn't because he lives in Barcelona, and he couldn't make it happen. Vern was the founder, of course, of YEO, now EO, as well as Gazelles, and on and on and on and on. A dear friend who said to me in this conversation that we had just a couple of weeks ago, Michael, he said, I live in Barcelona. I don't know whether you know it or not, but it's because of you. I said, why is that, Vern? He said, well, you remember when you spoke to EO in Chicago at our university um, several years ago, um, your keynote was so deeply moving of me that I immediately left it and I went out into the hall and I called my wife and I said, honey, um, hold on to your hat because we're about to go off on a year sabbatical. We're gonna travel around the world and we're taking the children why am I doing this? I just heard Gerber. Don't ask, let's do it. And he did that, and they settled down in Barcelona. So he couldn't be here, so I'm here. And I have to say, it's been an extraordinarily, extraordinarily exciting experience for me. Exciting on the one hand, because all of this youthful vigor and energy, people who are creating stuff before our very eyes, but at the same time, a bit depressing. And a bit depressing simply because I'm listening to um, this academic conversation. And understand the academic conversation from my standpoint, who's a street guy who comes from the street, who grew up in the street, who was a wandering Jew. Um, essentially a beatnik when there are beatniks, a hippie when there are hippies, a saxophone player, um, a salesman, um, a framer of houses, and then suddenly discovering that I knew something that the small business owner I was talking to hadn't a clue about. And that was that selling is a system. And I'd been there by invitation of my brother-in-law who owned a small advertising agency in Silicon Valley. And he said, Michael, would you come speak to Bob who was in a startup high-tech company in Silicon Valley? And I said, Ace, my brother-in-law's name, I don't know what in the world I would be coming to speak to Bob about because I don't know anything about business. And I certainly don't know anything about high-tech. He said, don't worry, Michael, you know more than you think you do. Just please do me the favor because Bob can't convert the leads we create into sales. So I did. So we get to Bob's place, and um, Ace introduces me to Bob, Bob to me, and then he says, I'm taking off for an hour, um, get to know each other, and I'll be back to pick Michael up. So I started that conversation with two assumptions. First of all, I don't know anything about business, and I knew I didn't. And secondly, that Bob does, because he owns one. And then we started to talk. Bob says to me, so Michael, what do you know about my business? Nothing, Bob. So what do you know about our products? Less than that, Bob. So if you don't know anything about my business, you don't know anything about my products, how in the hell can you help me? And I said, I haven't a clue, Bob, but we got an hour to kill. You like Ace, I like Ace, I'm sure we're gonna find out something. Do you gotta understand, that's how it started. That's how this odyssey of mine started. An absolutely an unexpected experience. Meeting with Bob for an hour in his office. And during that conversation in which I simply asked Bob questions, and because I had nothing to lose and nothing to gain, and because I was accustomed to listening, because that's what I'd been doing all my life, 
listening, listening to the guy who taught me how to play the saxophone, listening to the guy who taught me how to sell encyclopedias, listening to the guy who taught me how to frame a house, listening, 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 becoming a craftsman, becoming a master at whatever I learned how to do. And because I truly knew that selling is a system, music is a system, framing is a system, I'm talking to Bob and I realized that Bob didn't know any of that. Bob knew what he was selling. He believed he knew his customer, but in fact, he didn't know what I knew. Here I was, this raw business novice. And suddenly I realized why I was there. And I said to Bob, Bob, the biggest mistake you made was to hire sales engineers to sell your product. First of all, because they're sales engineers and they haven't a clue. And second of all, because they don't have a way to do what you're expecting them to do. And because they don't have a way to do what you're expecting them to do, they can't possibly do what you're expecting them to do. But I can create that way for you. He said, you can? I said, sure I can. He said, but what do you know about my business? I said, I already answered that, Bob. But don't worry, it's a done deal. So Ace comes to pick me up. And Ace wants to know what happened with Bob. And I said, well, he hired me. And Ace says, hired you to do what? I said, to create a selling system. He said, how in the world are you going to do that? You don't know anything about business. You don't know anything about the product. I said, I don't know, Ace, but I absolutely know I can. And that's exactly what I did. What I essentially said to Bob is, when we're done, a kid can sell this. Because if we can't make it so a kid can sell this, you're just screwing around, Bob. Now, that's what the frustration was. Because following Bob, there was Mary, there was Jim, there was Jerry, and I began to go to work on Ace's client companies. One sold furniture, one sold high tech, one was a service business, one was another advertising agency, on and on and on and on, learning, 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 learning what was missing every single place I went. It was like every single one of these founders of every single one of these companies went into a store, bought a jigsaw puzzle, went to their new business, opened the box, threw all the pieces on the floor, and then threw away the cover of the box. They hadn't a clue what they were there to do, other than to sell stuff and to keep busy. Doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 busy. Anybody here who's the read the e-myth knows that expression because that, in fact, is the biggest economic problem our country faces today and every single country I've been in. When we say we've applied the e-myth to tens of thousands of companies, over 70,000 client companies in every industry, high tech, low tech, no tech, you name it, when I tell you that there is a universal solution to every single business problem everybody experiences, and we've proven it, when I say, in fact, contradict what everybody might believe, that there is a way to do exactly what every single young entrepreneur, old entrepreneur, would-be entrepreneur, could-be entrepreneur sets out to do, most people would tell me that's not possible. But here I am, the standing evidence which essentially tells you that, in fact, it's not only possible, it's absolutely been done. And I'm sitting here, and that's the frustration, saying, how come nobody asked me, how in the hell did you do that? It's like nobody is really interested in that. It's like they're going to reinvent the wheel all over again. We're going to create education for entrepreneurs. Holy shit, guys, I did that in 1970 freaking seven without knowing anything other than I better go out in the street and talk to small business people. And that's what we did. We went and made cold calls, truly hundreds of thousands of cold calls on every single small business everywhere we were. And we discovered by asking these questions, what questions? We created the questions asked based upon the answers we were getting, continuous improvement, continuous improvement, continuously inventing the system through which we're going to discover what's missing in this picture. And I'm standing here, what year is it? 2011, and I'm sitting here saying, you guys don't have a problem. 
It's already been solved. Ray Kroc solved it at McDonald's. Has anybody looked at McDonald's today? Has anybody, for example, looked at the performance of McDonald's today as a top tier company in the world selling an ordinary product called a hamburger, a milkshake, and french fries? How in the hell does somebody create a sustainable company based upon an ordinary commodity? Not high tech, not wizardry, not anything absolutely spectacular, but basic, basic, elementally successful because they invented this extraordinary system. And that extraordinary system beneath the golden arches continues to outperform everybody. Well, what if in fact you were to go out not to the high tech, not to the guys at the top of the tier, not to all of the bright, most wonderful people that I met, met here and talked to, but everybody on the street. Jerry the plumber, Jim the electrician, Mary the whatever the hell she is, graphic designer. And in fact, begin to ask the very same questions we began to ask at the very beginning. How do we turn Mary's company around? The only way in the world we're gonna do that is to turn Mary around. And the only way we're going to turn Mary around is to open a conversation with Mary that Mary has never had before. And we had that conversation again and again and again and again and again because we were interested in what was truly going on and what their perceptions of reality were. We discovered the fundamental underlying truth that most people who go into business aren't entrepreneurs, but what I've come to call technicians suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. And they create a job for themselves. And it's the worst job in the world because they're working for a lunatic. But if we could fix that problem, and we could, and we did, and we are, if we could fix that problem, then understand the opportunity resides now within every single human being on the face of this earth. I say, and I hope that you hear this, the voice of experience, the voice of somebody who's gone down the street doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, and looking for the answer, looking for the answer at the bottom of the pyramid, not at the top, where everybody's living on the street, not at the top, not out in the refined arena, but in the unrefined arena where all of the problems are, the minute you begin to do that, you begin to discover, my God, there's something we have to share with these people. If we can speak to them in a language they can understand, if we can inspire them in a way that they have never been, if we can teach them in a way that they've never been taught before, if we can train them in a way they've never been trained before, if we can coach them in a way they've never been coached before, and if we can mentor them in a way they've never been mentored before, because what we need is a profoundly effective system. If I could invent the McDonald's of small business consulting, I said to myself, we can transform the state of small business worldwide. And if we can transform the state of small business worldwide, the economic reality of the world would be significantly different today. So I say that to you, the excitement of watching young folks to you understand I wasn't an entrepreneur when I was young. I didn't start my company till I was 41. I was a wandering Jew, wandering around, looking for the truth, looking for the truth, looking for the truth. I was reading books, writing poetry. I was smoking dope. I was doing what anybody and everybody was doing who was truly searching for the meaning of his life. And I'm saying that when you go out there on the street, you will discover everybody searching for meaning. Viktor Frankl's extraordinary book, when you go out in the street, you'll discover everybody's missing meaning, and that's what's missing in this picture. The meaning of entrepreneurship is not about inventing a new company. The meaning of creativity is not about high-tech, low-tech, no-tech, whatever tech. The meaning of all this is not about education. The minute you begin to focus on education, you're already off track. It's the meaning of all this, and that's what is so absolutely profoundly missing. So I've given you a little gift. 
um, with the folks who brought us here. And the little gift is a book called Awakening the Entrepreneur Within, how ordinary people can create extraordinary companies without any experience to guide them. And a little DVD, which is 20 minutes long. I'm going to ask that you take the time, when you have the time, to watch the DVD with this precaution. If you do not believe in God, don't watch it. If you do not believe in America, don't even think about it. But if you believe in God and if you believe in America, watch the video. Because essentially it's an invitation for every single person who watches that video to awaken the entrepreneur within himself to find the founders again. The founders of our country again. Which has been lost, which is in danger of being destroyed, which in fact will be if we hope to create a solution with government and with large institutions, miss the entire point. It's not about education. It's about what's the meaning of this. So I just finished reading a book called Startup Nation about Israel. Now how is it that Israel could do what Israel is doing? How is it surrounded by those who absolutely are determined to destroy that country and those people called the Jew? How is it they could have accomplished and are accomplishing the impossible again and again and again and again? What in the world is it about that? They live up against it every single moment of every single day. We have to do that. So where are you going to find the opportunity? Go into the inner city. It's a shame. It's a crime. It's a tragedy that in fact we would take on a socialist mindset with the expectation that it's going to produce anything than everything it's produced everywhere it is. We need to take on an entrepreneurial mindset. We need to become founders again. And every single one of us with a blank piece of paper and beginner's mind need to become founders again. We need to come together as founders again. We need to come together exactly as they did way back then, 235 years ago, and invent a new country. Why? Because we've got to get rid of the freaking king. Why? Because we are oppressed by that. So we must become unsuppressed, unoppressed, and inventive again and create our own declaration of independence and create our own bill of rights and create our own constitution enable independent individuals to awaken the entrepreneur within to stimulate the imagination of everyone around them and to discover a path starting on the street to climb up, to create up, to reinvent the world, and every one of us have the potential to do that. I say that in fact we're born, every single one of us, in the image of God, and if we're born in the image of God, we're born to invent, we're born to create. There's a creator within every single one of us, and that was what's so exciting here, looking at the creators, talking to the creators, experiencing the creators, and letting you know it has nothing to do with technology, it has nothing to do with anything but the absolute, resilient, most extraordinary result, the meaning of why human beings are here on earth, and that's to create heaven on earth, to make earth a fitting home for God. That's the meaning, that's the passion, that's the power, that's how this great country started, that's how all of the origination was created, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. I hope you enjoy the book, and anybody who wants to help me, Louis Dahlia, my wife, origination, transform the state of entrepreneurship worldwide, I will guarantee you there's a system waiting the system is already there. All we need are those people who are committed to saying, okay, let's freaking do it, and let's do it. I thank you. Bye-bye. It's a pleasure. <laughs>